The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalova in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this revision session. Today, we shall be revising phase three of advanced level biology with Victor Ju, your biology teacher. Physiological processes will look at three topics, respiration, transport, and excretion. Respiration describes the processes by which organisms obtain gases from the environment and how they break down food to release energy. From this definition, we distinguish two types of respiration, internal or tissue respiration, where food substances are broken down within the cells of the body to release energy, and external respiration, also called breathing or gaseous exchange that occurs across the lungs in humans and across many other respiratory surfaces in other animals. Energy in living cells is provided in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The ATP molecule is made up of an adenosine group, ribose, and three phosphate groups. The first phosphate group, once it, released, it is released from the molecule, provides energy for metabolic activities in the cell. The ATP molecule is very effective as an energy molecule because it is mobile. The mobility allows the molecule to easily move to areas in the cell where energy is needed or carried from places where it is produced with much energy into other areas. The ATP molecule releases energy quickly only by hydrolysis. The rate of reformation of ATP from ATP can be varied quickly according to energy demand. To this effect, the ATP molecule serves as an energy giving molecule and an energy storage molecule. Tissue respiration is the breakdown of substrates to release energy. This includes aerobic respiration, when oxygen is used and anaerobic respiration that occurs in the absence of oxygen. In aerobic respiration, the first phase that occurs is called glycolysis. And glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Glycolysis is a series of reactions showing the pathway of reactions in the oxidation of glucose. The first step that occurs is phosphorylation of glucose catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. The glucose is isomerized to form fructose and later fructose 6-phosphate. This hexose now splits to form two molecules of a three carbon atoms compound called phosphoglyceridehyde. Phosphoglyceridehyde is oxidized to pyruvic 
acid. The fate of pyruvic acid depends on the presence or absence of oxygen. Now, in the presence of oxygen, pyruvic acid is converted to acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A now leaves the cytoplasm and enters into the mitochondrion where Krebs cycle occurs. During Krebs cycle, acetyl coenzyme A combines with oxaloacetic acid and this leads to the formation of citric acid. The citric acid is dehydrogenated, passing through intermediary molecules, leading to formation of succinic acid. Carbon dioxide is released, and the molecule regenerates oxaloacetic acid. During this process, coenzymes are also reduced, where we have formation of reduced NAD and reduced FAG. These are molecules that enter into the respiratory chain the next phase and provide energy. During the Krebs cycle, during formation of a substrate from another substrate, ATP molecules are formed, and this is called substrate level phosphorylation. The NAD and FAT, which are formed during Krebs cycle, enter now into the respiratory chain in the cristae of the mitochondrion, where electron transport system occurs. In this system, if NAD enters into the system, NAD supplies electrons to FAD. When FAD receives electrons, the reduced FAD becomes oxidized and it also loses electron at a higher energy level. This provides energy for production of ATP. The electrons from FAD are now received by electron carriers called cytochromes. The cytochromes become excited, lose electron, and another ATP molecule is formed. The electrons from cytochromes are now received by cytochrome oxidase, which also becomes excited, releases electrons, and ATP molecules are formed. Therefore, each time NAD, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, enters into the electron transport system, three molecules of ATP are formed. If FAD enters into the respiratory uh, electron transport system, since the route from NAD to FAD is absent, NAD supplies electrons to cytochromes, producing an ATP molecule. Cytochromes provide electrons to cytochrome oxidase, producing another ATP molecule. Therefore, each time flavine adenine dinucleotide or reduced FAG enters into the electron transport system, two molecules of ATP are formed. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation because ATP molecules are formed in the presence of oxygen. The hydrogen ions which are present in A finally combine with ox or reduce oxygen to form water. And from this, we see that during aerobic respiration, glucose is broken down completely to form carbon dioxide and oxygen. And aerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondrion. And it occurs in three major reactions, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport. In anaerobic conditions, in the absence of oxygen, which occurs only in the cytoplasm, glycolysis also occurs. And glycolysis will lead to production of pyruvic acid. Remember we said the fate of pyruvic acid depends on the presence or absence of oxygen. Now, in anaerobic respiration or fermentation, where oxygen is not present, pyruvic acid is broken down to ethanol and carbon dioxide. Ethanol will now be converted to lactic acid in bacteria and muscle cells, or ethanol is converted to alcohol in yeast and higher plant cells. All of these reactions occur in the cytoplasm of the cell. As we see in the equation, Oxygen combines with water to form 
carbon dioxide and ATP molecules. 38 ATP molecules are formed during aerobic respiration. First, direct synthesis in glycolysis. We have two ATP molecules which are formed, and that is a net gain because during glycolysis, four ATP molecules are produced, two are used, and therefore the net gain is two ATP molecules. Two molecules of reduced NAD are formed in glycolysis. When they enter into the electron transport system, each molecule of NAD will produce three ATP molecules, as we just explained, and therefore six ATP molecules are produced. Eight molecules of NAD are formed in Krebs cycle, and when they enter into the respiratory chain, 24 molecules of ATP are formed. Two molecules of fat are also formed in Krebs cycle, which enter into the respiratory chain and forms four ATP molecules. During direct synthesis in Krebs cycle, two ATP molecules are formed. And here we are talking of substrate level phosphorylation. As a result, a total of 38 ATP molecules are formed during oxidation of glucose. Gaseous exchange or ventilation is the exchange of respiratory gases such as carbon dioxide and oxygen between the environment and living organisms. Types of gas exchange structures in different animals. We have external gills in young tadpoles and lockworms, internal gills in fish, trachea in insects, lungs in air-breathing vertebrates. Characteristics of good respiratory surfaces, such as the lungs, the gills, and other structures we've seen they must be permeable so that respiratory gases can pass across them. Their walls must be thin for short diffusion distances. They must possess a large surface area to volume ratio so that they can absorb a large amount of gases for diffusion to be sufficient to supply the needs of the cells. Many living organisms have pigments that facilitate exchange of respiratory gases. The first pigment is hemoglobin, which has ion as its metal ion. And hemoglobin is common in mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fishes. We have myoglobin, which also has ion as its central ion present in mammals. Myoglobin is the oxygen storage molecule within muscles. Hemoerythrin, also containing ion, is present in some annelids. Chlorochlorine, containing ion, is present in some annelids. And we have hemocyanin, that contains copper and is present in snails and crustaceans. Gaseous exchange in insects occurs through inspiration and expiration. During inspiration, the body muscles re relax and the body retains its original shape. The volume of the trachea and tracheals increase. The pressure decreases and air flows into the body through the spiracles. During expiration, the body muscles contract the body of the insect flattens and becomes smaller. This causes decrease in the volume of the trachea system, resulting to an increase in pressure. Due to increased pressure within the trachea, above atmospheric pressure, the air is forced out of the body of the insect through the spiracle to the environment. We should note that respiration in insects occurs without the need of blood to carry the gases. And this is because the tracheals have direct contact with the cells of the body of the insect. When the insect is actively flying in air, gaseous exchange occurs directly between the trachea and the cells of the body. When the organism is at rest, the, the gaseous exchange now occurs between fluid 
that circulate around the tracheals. Respiration in bony fish, such as tilapia. Inspiration. First, the hypobronchial muscles contract. The floor of the mouth is lowered. The pharyngeal cavity expands and pressure within it reduces. Water is drawn in through the mouth. The opercular muscles contract and the operculum closes. This increases the pressure of the water and forces it into the gills. Once the water gets into the gills, gaseous exchange occur over the surfaces of the gills. Remember, gills are structures capable of extracting oxygen in water. They extract oxygen from the water and carbon dioxide, which is more in the gills, moves by simple diffusion into the water. Expiration. Expiration occurs as a reverse of inspiration. The hypobronchial muscles relax, the floor of the mouth is raised, the pharyngeal cavity decreases, pressure increases, the operculum, opercular muscles relax, the operculum opens, and water moves out of the body of the fish. This type of respiration is described as counter current flow, and it ensures that up to 80% of oxygen in water is absorbed. This is because blood and water are moving in opposite direction, and therefore they make maximum contact along the, the range of the gills, making this type of system to be more efficient, absorbing close to 80% of oxygen in water. Respiration in cartilaginous fish, such as dogfish. Inspiration, the hypobronchial muscles contract, the floor of the mouth is lowered, the pharyngeal cavity expands, and the pressure within it reduces. Water is drawn in through the mouth and spiracles. Gaseous exchange occurs over the gills by simple diffusion. Expiration occurs in the reverse manner. And this system is known as the parallel flow system. And this is because blood and water move in the same direction across the surfaces of the gills. This is less efficient than the countercurrent system, and only close to 50% of the oxygen in water is absorbed by the gills. Ventilation of the lungs. Ventilation of the lungs occurs in two major processes. Inspiration. As we look on the figure, we have the intercostal muscles. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm contract. Once these two muscles contract, the thorax and the thoracic cavity moves upwards and outwards. As the thoracic cavity moves upwards and outwards, the lungs expand. The expansion of the lungs increases their volume and the pressure decreases below atmospheric pressure. To that effect, air rushes into the lungs through the nostrils. Expiration. Expiration occurs as a direct opposite of inspiration. During expiration, the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. The diaphragm retains its normal doom shape. The thoracic cavity moves downwards and inwards. The volume of the lungs and thorax decreases. The pressure in them increases above atmospheric pressure. And due to this increased pressure, air is forced out of the lungs to the environment through the nostrils. Control of breathing. In mammals, the main factor that controls breathing is increase in carbon dioxide concentration. When the amount of carbon dioxide in the cells and tissues of the body increases, it stimulates chemoreceptors 
in the carotid and aortic bodies. Once these chemoreceptors are stimulated, they produce impulses which are carried to the inspiratory center. When the, the impulses are carried to the diaphragm by the framing nerves and to the intercostal muscles by the intercostal nerves, these impulses cause the diaphragm and intercostal muscles to contract. When they contract, 